The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 86, Nasdaq's up 50, S&P's up 14 and a half, gold's up a buck 20, trading at 14.95 an ounce. You got silver up 13 cents, seventeen dollars fifty six cents an ounce. Light sweet crude down forty four cents, fifty two dollars ninety three cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten year down four ticks, one twenty nine twenty seven. Thirty year off eight at one sixty oh one. And King Dollar, King Dollar is that trading lower with conviction now down three fifty three ninety seven six forty eight. The euro is at one eleven. Pound is at one twenty eight. The yen is at one oh eight point five eight to one U S dollar. So, where do you want to start? Did you hear? We got a Brexit deal. Yeah. It's over. Pop, pop the champagne, baby. It's, maybe not Maybe not so quickly. It's, but It, it is uh, It's pretty wild. You take a look at this pound. Uh, that thing went to the moon last night. Um, really early this morning, right? Yeah. I mean, what time did that break? Let's see. I mean, you're talking about 5.30 in the morning about the yeah. news of the deal between the UK and the EU. Now, they have a deal, but Parliament needs to vote on that. Right. And that's where the market that's... started to hear from members of Parliament that said, I'm voting no. <laughs> and it's pretty remarkable that you actually almost dipped below right everything, um, let alone almost to back to where we were yesterday morning. Uh, and we're getting a bit of a bounce, 128.30, yeah. but but pretty interesting action over there on the pound, for we sure. go to the euro, the euro... Got a little pop also. Yes. The uh, euro is at 111. Holding some of those gains it, more so, for sure. It is. And yeah. it's inside the larger range now. Yeah. You know? So it's going to have a shot. Netflix, NFLX. So boy, oh, boy. Internationally, they're doing the job. 6.3-something uh, million subscribers in 90 days internationally. Yeah. Um, yeah. But look at how, I mean, what are we, we're already off the high. It's 308. That's right. We're $12 off the high. And look at, I mean, the year. You're going into these high volume sure. down down drafts. Yeah, you just can't handle it. Because we'll pull up if we can pull up the thicker swim. Because this is giving us the intraday. Can I see what the high of that? Uh, yeah. Where where that? So the low of that bar right there even is like 320 yes. to get you even back to that bar. Right. And I think we spiked. And that's the down draft, folks, from their last earnings, I believe. Yeah. Let's see now. IBM. We'll get to that oh, one. Oh yeah, but, that's a um, mess. I know, right? Talk about disappointing. Uh, so 318.79. I knew we were that. close. I mean, yeah. look at that. Giving up $16 right. already. So that's that's a solid 5% off the high right. that it spiked to last night. And that's a classic bounce, man. That's a classic bounce right into a downdraft. Uh, and then it just can't handle it. And to dig into some of the numbers, man. So look at the earnings, right? Quite yeah. a beat, man. Buck 47 versus a dollar 04. Revenue pretty much in line. Yeah. And domestically they miss. So they're looking for 800. They come in at 517. Internationally, they beat. They were looking for 6.05. They came in at 6.26. Um, and, you know, the market loved it right off the bat. But this morning, what's going on? Why are they? And so the company is projecting 7.6 million global net ads for the fourth quarter compared to 8.8 .8 million the same quarter one year earlier. So maybe that's a little worrisome. You know, yeah. that's a slowdown. And that's factoring in the global. And so let's see the rebound here. And that was the big miss, right? I mean, I, I wonder how they did this to, to put it yeah. lightly because right. number one they beat on earnings so it's not like they just spent gangbusters right and just you know emptied out the coffers to to do it because they knew that they had to try and correct at least you can't force it right but they did it and they beat on earnings that's pretty remarkable yeah. because that's quite an anomaly man you're looking at the yellow yeah. is the u.s ads blue being international and last quarter was just a mess, man. And right. they, maybe it was an anomaly. And they, they had that there. I mean, you know, we think it was an American company, but the, when you go through the what they're saying at the, the conference call and all this, okay, they're, they're building huge amounts of content in every country in every language. Okay. You know, so that's like okay. You know, yeah, there no, you go. They better be right. You know what I mean? They better be. You know, yeah. Big Blue. Let's go see what's going on with Big Blue. This has been a mess since uh, for five years now, and um, it don't stop. No, it don't, I mean, wait, wait to see this chart. This this is like, yeah, two fifteen. I think was the high. 
Can we even back it up further, maybe? Yeah, I guess I have to. I don't know that's if that's right. the high. No, it's, that's, that's 215. That's not the high, because that's oh, okay. 215. There we go. There you go. 2012. Look at that. Yeah, 13. And it's been, you know, one-way trip. Yeah. And the, the problem with Big Blue right now, folks, is that these, oh, these lows are sticking out, and it couldn't make it, you know? Yeah. So let's see what they have to say. Yeah. I heard one of the analysts on Bloomberg today talking about if you compare IBM, I think it's from the crash of 2008 or something, to yeah. Microsoft, where they, they could have been on similar paths in terms of cloud structure. Oh, now, completely sure. different. They don't have, you know, Microsoft Outlook. They don't have Windows. But IBM was positioned to be a big player. Oh, yeah. And we'll have to compare the charts because in my head I said, oh, man, because Microsoft's been on a tear and IBM's just been doing nothing but right. declining. Because when you look at, you know, like Microsoft with their cloud business, right? We look at Amazon with their cloud business. Exactly. The cloud business, you know, That's the Amazon. Right. It's like it Mike, is. they could have been there. Amazon right. Web Services, right. right? So revenue, man, a big number miss. You know, it looks like a decimal point, but guess what? That decimal point's almost $200 million that Look they missed that. in 90 days, right? So you come in at 18.03. They were looking for 18.22. Earnings per share, pretty much in line. They beat by a penny. Um, Look at the crowd, their cloud revenue is down. <laughs> quarter over quarter. Third quarter. See the fourth one down. Which one? Could you read it? Cloud and cognitive software revenue, 5.28 ah, billion. Ah, cloud, okay. I did it. I was six, Minus 6.5. Quarter on quarter. That's yeah. a big number, man. That is a big number, man. Those, that is not a shrinking sector. Yeah, <laughs> They no. should not be shrinking. Yeah. Um, still sees fiscal year operating earnings per share, 1280. Estimate is 1281. They got fiscal year free cash flow of about 12 billion. That's quite a number. That's a good number. Yeah. yeah um, so Let's see, eight buys, 16 holds, two sells. Not quite an endorsement from the analyst, man. But, you know, you look at, so they have it, but this is, they, they got to deliver, man, because they're still valued. And then they bought Red Hat, too. I forgot about that. Yeah, they put them. So they're still valued, a $120 billion company, right? They got 300, I was watching your show, the archive of this morning, 350,000 employees, man. Pretty remarkable. They're still a juggernaut, but they're priced at $120 billion. They better be delivering um, right. for shareholders at, at that type of valuation. And you get in there, I mean, they make money, they do, but look at this. This is the worry here. Negative, negative, negative. Yeah. yeah, you know, big, big problems, man. In terms of, you're in a growing sector, man. You're not in, you're not in, right. you know, selling archaic TVs. You know, you're not in, um, you know, whatever it is that's going to oh, the wayside. No you're, you're in no servers and cloud they, they computing. Get, they get eaten alive in that cloud computing deal, which is pretty, Bezos, which is pretty well. Bezos, their lunch. Yep, no totally. Doubt. Some of the uh, higher volume equities out here. Let's see what we have. Well, you got uh, Bank of America's up 31 cents. Uh, I believe Morgan Stanley came out with they did, numbers. and I it? believe they Let's... crushed it. Let's see how they're doing. Uh, yeah, so yeah, pretty good. Up a buck 46. Not bad. That's about three percent, maybe a little bit more. The banks, man, they really delivered pretty much across the board, right? Yeah. So let's see. Let me just move it down one that we get. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think so. No. That's how it works. No okay, I think the top. There we go. Yeah. So earnings uh, crush it at a buck twenty-one versus buck ten, and uh, revenue, equity trading revenue in particular, yeah. that's that's quite a beat. It is. Yeah. One point nine nine billion versus one point nine one billion. Oh, I, we gotta pull up this out. Did you, did you see the article yet about the the guy that did two options? And, oh, we gotta find it. Okay, that's a good right teaser. There, two this, options. This what did he do with those options? He made a lot of money. Okay, we'll find out. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. And we were talking about option trades. And you see this. This is, this is pretty amazing, actually. Uh, and I, you talk about hitting it right on the nail. Uh, so this story here, this is on Bloomberg this morning. Yeah. So we find it on Yahoo Finance, but it's a Bloomberg uh, piece. And so, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, a guy on Red, Reddit? Reddit. That's a big uh, blog um, okay. type uh, on the Internet. They got sub blogs and so forth. He turned seven hundred and sixty-six dollars into one hundred and seven thousand on two option trades, folks. Yeah, the first one, the biggest one, was Roku, man. So they get down into here, and there's a lot of just talk about Reddit in general and the and the the group that he's in. But nonetheless, when the stock of Roku streaming service provider shares tend to fluctuate, to say the least, cratered nineteen percent on September twentieth. Uh, Eddie Choi, I believe it is, yeah. Chow. Uh, initial $766 investment in puts in Roku, a bet that it would decline, ballooned to $50,500 overnight. Let's pull that up now. September sure. 20th. Okay. So we get to see what, this. We'll just jump right here. All right. Know, I've seen money made in options, but I've never yeah. quite okay. seen something like this. We'll back it up. We'll put it on a daily. I mean, Roku's decline has been oh, yeah. pretty and, epic, and man. September 20th also, let me look at this, I bet that's expiration or it's close to it. Right there, you had Roku trade from a high of 127 to a low of 103. Okay. Yeah, and what's remarkable though is that September 9th it was trading at 176. So Eddie missed Eddie missed a few things. And you look at it, it's yeah. white lightning. It was it was option yep. expiration. That's the too. third Friday in September, it right? It was option exp and that may, that makes the difference. That would make sense for sure. Right. And then they continue in the article. So how much did it go from? From one twenty seven to one oh three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it looks like it I mean, just one, two, three, four yeah. four different so days. What he would have had, folks, he would have had something way out of the money. Sure. Seven hundred and something dollars could have had hundreds of contracts out of the money. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, like ten cents. Right. Yeah. It's it's you know it's a it's basically a fifty bagger, right? You put up a thousand, you get fifty thousand. Yeah. Not to say there's a lot of opportunities and options if you know it's going to happen to do that, but man, if you're and then the next one, what was the next one he had? He went and parlayed that in the S and P, I yeah. believe. So a few days later, lightning struck again, and uh, Choi doubled his Roku winnings by buying more puts. This time in the S and P, SPY. 
fell to 295.87 on September 21st, excuse me, 24th, the first time it closed be below 297 in more than two weeks, and he had 297 puts that were set to expire on the 25th. Okay, so let's go look at that one, too. Okay. So, that's good. That, so that let's one, say, let's just pull up that the one there, he had here. the weeklies. Because the third, the first one was the third Friday, which is the, the monthlies, all the weeklies. The yep. second one was definitely the weeklies, because of the following week. And he's looking at, there's the 24th. Okay. And he had the 25th. So it was, they said, first time it closed below 297. So this might have been the day where you had the SPY go from a high of 299.84 to a low of 294.84. That's more than five points in the SPY. That's 50 S&P points, right? Um, and again, yeah. this one, not as substantial, though. Doubling your money on an option trade, yeah, that's, I don't want to say fairly common, but it, it better is. be, you it know. Is, um, yeah, right. And, you know, if he actually put up the fifty thousand dollars, that's what I was just about to go to. If he actually turned a grand into fifty grand, yeah, and then put the whole fifty grand in yeah. spy puts, that's not cool. The next day, just to double it to a hundred, I say right. just to double it to a hundred because guess what, man? I think he said it could have been gone that they were two ninety seven puts. Uh, yeah, his two ninety seven puts. Well, guess what? He got into those when they were out of the money. Well, right. buying fifty thousand dollars worth of out of the money options. You know, Dave White has a great saying, right. check out Path of Least Resistance, folks. Right. Options are supposed to reduce risk, not add to risk. Right. Well, that's not exactly a reduction of risk, taking your 50-bagger and putting it all into out-of-the-money no. spy puts. Should have gone and bought a nice boat. Hopefully he did with the 100. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, natural gas. So oh, it's yeah. Thursday. We got some natural gas inventories. Let's jump over and see where we're trading at. So interesting, of course, we get, look at the pound getting a little pop as we uh, jump over here. Yeah. We'll close that for a moment. We're going to jump in. Let's see where we're trading at. We're going to pull up the commodities. We'll pull up natural gas. We'll get this. I'm going to close out some of these windows to make it easy. And let's see where these line up. Now, you know what? This has been up since early. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to reset this. Uh, but let's see where the dailies line up. We got 230 to 270. Where are we trading at? 233.8. Quite a little run with natural gas this morning, going from like 229.5 up to almost 235. 233.7 is the contract. And let's just see. Can we pull up the Bloomberg? We pulled this up yesterday, right? We're looking for a build. Yeah. Um, about 106, I believe it was. 108, it was. 108 106 yeah. on the natural gas build. And uh, we got a minute. We got a minute 15. Okay. Do you want to jump around to the contract here? Let's, let's pull up the contract, and then we can jump back. We'll call this 60 seconds of trading. That's better be quick on That's thing. right, man. Okay. Don't worry. We got the clock up. I'm, 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 watching, okay. I'm watching the seconds tick. So. Yeah, quite a little run from under okay, 230. So, so I'm going for a build because I, I think it's still going to go down. You're bearish? All yeah. right. So you're looking right. for a little bit bigger build than the right. market might be anticipating. We'll jump back to the chart. The market, so that edged up a bit. I think it was 106 and 108 yesterday. Okay. Now it's 107, 109. Maybe the market thinking the same thing. Yeah. So in theory, you'd want to go above that level, right? Right. right. What uh, what are you, what are you thinking? Yeah, 120. Whoa, shooting the moon, baby. I uh, do 115. Ah, you sure? First guess is usually the right. Nah, sorry. All right. 115. With 20 seconds to spare. Okay. Um, and let's just jump around while we're here for a moment. Crude oil. We get that number at 11 o'clock today, right when yeah. we go off the well, air. Yeah, we want to put one of those in. Looking too. for a build as well, between about 3 million to 2.7 million barrels. Maybe we can jump to crude oil the same way and take a peek at that. Um, whoops. Go for it if you can enter uh, CL. Oh, yeah. Uh, Z, maybe? Yeah. Or you could just go for the generic. Yeah, active. There we go. X, okay. That's look at, a mess. Look at that, man. Yeah. I mean, just remarkable. We, we talk lows. about it so often, but you get the attack on the Saudi fields, oil spikes above 60 bucks, and then you can't handle in a heartbeat, man. We're trading yep. at 53.12, and, uh, you know, the market expecting more oil, expecting 3 million barrels as we come into this number. It, it, it's going to be pretty amazing if... if Oil ever breaks these bottoms. I agree. Like for what's going on. I it's, agree. You know, but it's laying there. You got Turkey and Syria yeah. going on out there, totally. right? You got Saudi Arabia and Iran. You got Saudi oil field getting attacked. You have the Iranian ship getting missiled. You're right. Right. I, I, but 
And that has a high volume spike at the low today. But guess wow. what? We got plenty of oil, man. Yes. That's what the market keeps saying. So 52.62, we made it all the way down to. Yeah. And even, I mean, look at, we're getting a little spike right now, man. What are these, 10 minute bars? Yeah, yes. 10 minute bars. We just traded from 52.95 up to now 53.15. Um, so we got a half an, half an hour until one. we get the crude number. We get the natural gas numbers when we come back from the break. And uh, watch out, man. Volatility across that, the board. That's natural gas has been like driving people crazy for years yes meaning it stays it has stayed so low lots yeah. of natural gas man lots of natural gas yeah dow dow is up 107 nasdaq's up 50 s&p's up 14 and a half uh good old king dollar that's getting a smoke down there. it's down to 390 right now at 97.61 and that's uh there goes that pound 128 was at 129 this morning yep come right back folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down. Up, Dow is up 93. Nasdaq's up 38. S&P's are up 13. And natural gas. Okay, we'll get into the number, but it looks pop. like we got a pop, man. There might be a reduction in the actual number coming over. Why don't we pull up NG1 to get over to the news for it? Natural gas, generic. We'll dig there. We'll pull up the news function of CN. And 104. So a little bit of a miss. You, you will 
SAU, as in the market, was looking for about 109. Number comes in at 104, less inventory than they thought. You're going to see a rise in price. But man, oh man, I wouldn't be too keen on making sure that's what's going to happen because natural gas, you never know. I and just as I say it, quickly, we're right back to 234, 235, and uh, we'll see where we trade. But still a lot of natural gas. Oh, yeah. 104 billion cubic feet for the build for the week and uh, natural gas at 235. And maybe, you know, we just rose six pennies from where we were at at 2, 3 in the morning this morning. So there might be some pause in, in terms of pushing that price any higher, even yeah. with a miss there. No doubt. Okay. So more trades. Let's do I, this. I got a cool this, article, man. This is sick, folks. One of my friends sent this today in our group chat. So the headline is, there's definite hanky-panky going on, quote, unquote, the fantastically profitable mystery of the Trump chaos trades, okay? So the president's talk can move markets. I think we all know that. Yeah. And it's made some fortunes futures traders, billions, uh, did they know what he was going to say before it? So just some of these numbers are staggering, man. You know, you don't know what's going on because this has to do with more than just what Trump's doing. You right. know, we'll get into right. it. But they're all kind of geopolitical type. Oh, the geopolitical trades. Deals. Sure. So it starts off in the last 10 minutes of trading at the Merck. On Friday, September 13th, somebody got, well, I don't know about Lucky. We'll see about that. That's when he or she or a group sold Sold short 120,000 S&P E-minis. Okay, so September 13th, you go short 120,000 E-minis. And it just explains the trade. When the index was trading at 3,010. Right. That was 3.50 p.m. in New York. Nearing midnight in Tehran, a few hours later, that is when the drones attacked Saudi Arabia's oil infrastructure. That causing, of course, haywire in the market. Yeah. By the time the CME next opened for pre-trading on Sunday night, S&P had fallen 30 points. That trade alone, $180 million. You make a trade like that 10 minutes <laughs> till, Friday. till 4 on Friday, Close and you Sunday have... Night one of the biggest oil attacks that we've seen in a long right. time, and you bank almost $200 million. We'll, we'll wait till you see some of these, man. This staggering. Okay, so. Three days earlier. Yep. In the last 10 minutes of trading, seems like a good time to be trading, yeah. man. Somebody bought 82,000 E-minis when it was trading at 29.69. That was 4 a.m. on September 11th in Beijing, where a few hours later, the Chinese government announced it would lift tariffs on a range of products for America as has been typical reaction of the U.S. stock market, um, as the trade war with China chugs on without any predictable logic, when the news about potential resolution seems positive, the markets go up while the news was viewed positively, and the S&P index moved swiftly to 29.96, up nearly 30 points. That same day, Trump said he would postpone tariffs. The S&P index moved to 3,016, 47 points since they had bought those E-mini futures, and that was at $50 a point, 47 points, $23.50 per a contract. Well, if you have 82,000 of them, man, you're looking at $190 million. One day profit. 24 hours. Yeah. One day profit, okay? Well, it gets better than that. Oh my God. A week earlier, three minutes before the CME closed on September 3rd, someone bought 55,000 E-mini contracts with the index at about 2906 at around 9 p.m. New York or 9 a.m. in Hong Kong, the market started moving and kept rallying for the next six hours, reaching 29.36 around 2 p.m. in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong leader announced that she would withdraw the extradition bill that had been causing so much turmoil, and they're still dealing with these, of course. Yeah. But whoever bought those E-minis a few hours earlier made 82.5 billion. Now here, ah, million, excuse me. We're about to get to the billion dollar this trade. I got ahead of myself. One. Yeah. But these were peanuts compared to the money made by a trader or group who bought 420,000, maybe uh, Elon Musk would like that number, September E-minis yeah. in the last 30 minutes of trading on June 28th, okay? That was 40% of the day's trading volume in the September E-minis. You can't ignore it. So by then, President Trump was already in Japan, 14 hours ahead of Chicago, and on his way to a roughly hour-long meeting with China's President Xi Jinping as part of the G20. On Saturday in Osaka, after the market had closed in Chicago, Trump emerged from the meeting and announced, this is great, announced that the intermittent trade talks were back on track. The following week was a good one in the stock market. Thanks to that announcement, on Thursday, June 27th, the S&P stood at about 29.15. A week later, it was just below 3,000, that's 84 points, or four, I mean, the 420s are everywhere in here, yeah. 4,200 per contract, 
And when you multiply it by the 420,000 contracts, $1.8 billion. That is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, we, we can go over and over. That's, uh, you know, you can make your best that, guess. That one there about the, I mean, these are big banks, a big hedge funds, big something. I mean, when they bought one half of everything that was traded. Yeah, so, and, and they, you know, I, I hadn't even finished the article, man. I was reading it early this morning, <laughs> right? Because those were the trades, I think. And then right. they, they go into some, some just discussion, you could call it. And so I haven't even read through most of this. But they talk about um, traders in Chicago have been watching these kind of wagers with kind of shock and awe since right. the start of the, the Trump presidency. They're used to rapid fluctuations. Volatility is common. But the precision and timing of these trades and the vast amount of money being made makes them wonder if it's on the level, as it should. Uh, are the people behind these incredibly lucky? Do they have access to information that other people don't have? Um, yeah. And then theoretically, market regulators, this is where it gets interesting. And I don't know what, sometimes these articles get long, but market regulators are supposed to be keeping an eye on this, okay? And so they're supposed to figure out what's going on, whether coincidences or more nefarious afoot. Yes. So calls to the Merck, where, where the trades take place, the Securities Exchange Commission, which regulates, and to the CFTC, which regulates futures, were answered in different ways. So you have Christopher Carafine at the SEC declined to comment. The CFTC did not respond to my inquiries, while a spokesman for the CME says the trades in question did not originate from a single for source and they were of no concern. There's no way for another trader, let alone an outsider such as me, to know who's making these trades, but regulators know or can find out. See, if they're passing the buck a little bit here, oh, right? Yeah. And, um, but the regulators know or can find out. One longtime CME trader who had been watching with disgust says he's never seen anything quite like these, not at least since Al-Qaeda cashed in before initiating September 11th. There's definite hanky-panky going on. It's abysmal. Yeah, you know, it's, it's oh, something yeah. to keep your eye on, man. When you talk about $1.8 billion being made with... E minis, man, oh man, that's that's yeah. not chump change, no. and you know so. And the, yeah, it's, right. Oh yeah, pretty it's remarkable, true. man. Pretty and, remarkable. and the regulators are running away. Yeah. And uh, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you make your own analysis. And it's, that, 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 well, you know, it's not over. I mean, that's we'll. I suspect we'll get, we'll be able to. We'll have another story like that in another four weeks. Well, and what happens, to put it in light, context is everything, all right? And you have a president who's come out before a jobs number and said, get ready for the jobs number, okay? Right. So he doesn't, the, right. the norm's not being followed about protecting information that's about to move markets. So don't think that, yeah. you know, it's supposed to be the way it's supposed to be because that's not how things are working these days. No. Yeah. Dow. Dow's up 75, Nasdaq's up 31, S&P's up 10 and a half. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. And so, folks, when we take a look at this E-mini, we're just going to walk you through, uh, you know, you get the margin requirement as to, uh, in the futures, as to, you know, what those trades are all about. So yeah. the margin requirement for a single contract is 6900 Yes. Now, that 6900 is leveraged in 150000 The secondary, as soon as you get one, is 6300 So yeah. for every 6300 you're leveraging 150 grand right now. Yeah, and um, so it's $50 a point. They went yeah. through that kind of right. in the article. So saying, you know, what kind of what kind of capital were they putting up for these trades, right? right. And I think some of the first trades were about 120 was for the calculator up for every day. So you're doing, even at 6300 right? And you might be able to get this number down, you were saying, yes. for different leverages, right. for different things. For different banks. Yeah, yeah. Um, but let's just put it as this because it's yeah. still staggering, man. It's not more than that. No, that's for sure. So some of the first trades were even like I think it was eighty thousand contracts. Whoops, was one of the ones they made one hundred and twenty million on. So if you just sixty three hundred per contract times eighty thousand contracts, five hundred million about they put up. They made one eighty. That was over like three day. days. Yeah, yeah, or a day or three days. Oh yeah, it was Friday to Monday. One of them were three days, one right. day. Um, and then the big one though was four hundred twenty thousand contracts. Right, that's yeah. the one that they made. 1.8 billion on. Right. And 6,300. Yeah. 2.6 billion dollars. Not bad. Sounds like a big investment, right. but not if you're going to make 1.8 billion over like a week. Uh, but these could have gone bad too if you didn't know what was going uh, yeah. on. You know, I mean, because yeah. what's going on is you're putting up 6,300, okay? And let's do this is a good one because 6,300. Right. $50 per point. Right. So all your money is gone in 126 points. Right. Okay. Right. So that can happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that no can doubt. happen. There's no doubt. Um, you know, it, it might not happen in a day because that's a solid more than 4% right now. Right. Um, but you know what? Look at the down limit right now. The down limit is 219 points below where we're currently trading. Yeah. So guess what? And the, this is just for today, folks. Yeah, yeah. That changes. But, you know, it's... Uh, Nonetheless, man, pretty, pr wild, pretty right? wild. And then the last part of the article we got to, it just mentioned one more trade that had, they're talking about regulators, right? And they're saying that in the last 10 minutes of trading on Friday, August 23rd, markets were roiling in the face of more trade news. Someone bought 386,000 September E-minis. <laughs> Three days later, Trump, that's when he lied about getting a call from China. And then it came out that there was no call at all. Okay. The market shoots up 80 points. And that was a $1.5 billion profit on those as well. So, you know, if you're in that inner circle and you know the president's just going to come out and say that, guess what, the China called me and, and everything's cool and we're back on board, man, oh, man, <coughs> it's pretty it's ridiculous intense. when you talk about $1.5 billion in 72 hours and no risk if you know oh. that the government is going to come out and lie to the people to manipulate the market, let alone, and then how do you know, though, they go over, and that's what I say, it's not just... Trump because they went over the Tehran trade, yeah. they went over the China deal. Um, pretty interesting though, man. Oh, 
pretty amazing. Yeah. The key is that you don't know. If, yep. if there's one thing you know out here now is that you don't know. <laughs> yeah, you better, um, yeah. There's, there's unforeseen risks in the market, right. right? You better be pricing in risks that you are unaware of. Exactly. That's what I would say. Yes. Yeah. So let's go take a look at that dollar. So we get some real good movement in this dollar. Uh, and we'll get interesting here to see that, okay, the, you know, you, you get a couple good days. This is a good conviction move out here today. It's uh, not going to take much to get it down to that 95, uh, 843 number. Let me just do this on a week. Not if the pound something. gets a, exactly. a good movement in the euro as well, because it seems yeah. like they haven't even really popped too much just yet. Yeah. Not, not, not to where they not, might go if they ever got that approved, exactly. right? Exactly. So... Yeah, that's, that's your first level. I mean, that's a that's a nice break. It's with quite conviction. a level, man. When yeah. you're going all the way back to the beginning of July. Yeah. I mean, that's a weekly. What is it? Yeah. That's June 28th, July, right. all the way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a solid almost four months. That you know, if they really get that together, that that pound. Yeah. I mean, it's remarkable. Is the pound is almost unchanged from yesterday. Now, we have some serious tails on the upward and downward. Right. But we're almost unchanged from yesterday, which is remarkable when you consider that they supposedly have a deal. Right. And then the euro, it's going to be, it, it looks like that once that deal gets done, it looks like they're both going to get some juice, you know? <laughs> if that deal gets done. Oh, my God. I, I just pull up the... the the euro folks, they they, they bet both they better both go up because you look at this chart and it's like what's that, twenty eighteen is yeah, February of eighteen. One point two one point twenty five. You're at one eleven. I guess yeah. that's not the end Can of the Can we back world. it up even more? Yeah, I'm gonna go ten fifteen. Sounds years good because you're gonna see the fall off. Wow. Right. That's right. I knew the highways because it had the the fall off and then there was some exuberance from the beginning of twenty seventeen there. Um but man, I mean you don't have to you know, talk about just, we'll put a line, man. Connect the dots. Are we going to get there? Come on. Because they almost match up pretty well, man. You know? Look at that. Yep. And that's going back to 2008. And that's when you're at buck 60. It's yeah. a long way to, well, I guess, 120, you'd be challenging that uh, downtrend. Yeah. Yep. That's a long way, man. It sure is. Oof. We'll see, because they yeah. already they have the potential deal that's been worked out, but it's got to go through Parliament. But then they're dealing, from what I hear, and I mean, this is a pretty similar deal to some of the ones that May had out there. Yes. So yes. what's the difference, you know? Right. So let's go over to the NQs, because it looks like the NQs are giving it up out here. So. Yeah, a little bit of a sell-off. We're, yeah. we're now 40 points off the high. That's Yeah. Like, that That's down a solid pretty, half a percent. Quick. It sure did. You know, we just came from uh, seventy nine ninety two. Yeah. And um, yeah. Definitely. We're That's, kind of right where we finished. I mean, it's flat right now after and, being pretty positive. In, inside the NDX, the strength versus the weakness out here. Netflix is up two point five percent. You get CSX, the real car, up at two point two. Biomolland up two. Taken away from it. Liberty's down two. JD's down one point five. And Workday is off uh, 1.4. Um, you know what I saw here uh, last night? And we, we were talking about Workday and this, uh, this whole deal. Um, in all these cities, I'm sure this is happening, right? The, uh, and right here in St. Pete, I didn't really know that we had a couple of these, right? Okay. And great article. Uh, you know, these things are open and everywhere. And different people. Sorry, these things, what? What is Workday? Workday. What I mean, uh, no, we, we work. work. That's we what work. I thought you were saying. Okay, we work. We work. Um, and I was looking at pictures of them. It's beautiful. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah. And I'm just really curious as to what the pricing structure is, because that, you know, I'm sure the analysts have brought that up. That hey, listen, it's only it's not only just we work out here. I was looking at the, what these people just did at this this building. It's only like two blocks away from us, right? Okay. Here. It's gorgeous. Yeah. You know, it's an old brick building. They it's all paid in. by SoftBank, man. They don't yeah. even take in money, so that's why it's beautiful. No, I oh, joke. You no, know, no. but they got it. But this is another company. Okay, a, a competitor. Competitor. Sure. No, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Competitors Who's giving them everywhere. money? No, I bet. The ice. Yeah. Listen, man, we know that. Do you know what I mean? But it's like I okay. saw an article. We'll try and pull it up at the break because it said something like, if you're a millennial and you order food through Uber Eats, you ride your Uber, you right. work at WeWork, you, you do something else, you're um, using companies that lost a collective 14 billion dollars last year. So. Guess what? 
things are about to get a lot more expensive. If you're like in this environment of all these high tech companies, they're just losing money. Yeah. And you think like this is a bargain and a half. Well, it is. It is a bargain. And it's going to change though. So yeah. get ready for the change. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And so uh, at 11, we are going to get those oil numbers. We sure are. So we usually go over some of those option plays, potentially. Yeah. If you're looking at any of those, make sure you're not getting the 11 a.m. expirations, of course, yeah. because that's when the number comes out. You know, if you're familiar with them on the Nadex platform, there'd be very little premium in it because that's there's why. no number. Yeah. So you maybe want to go for the noons or the dailies, but they're looking for a build of about 3 million barrels. And um, we get that number at about 11 o'clock. So we'll see what happens, man. But crude. Cheap prices, man. Cheap prices. We'll see. No, we put no. in maybe a little bit of a bigger build, looking for a pullback on those prices. Because, man, if a Saudi oil field getting attacked can't cause higher prices, what is going to cause higher prices in that market, There's man? No doubt. And you know the market in general is having a tough time holding price out here. It, Definitely. It, it went up. If we even let's take a look at the E-minis, they they went up. They were testing the highs of Tuesday and they couldn't handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we're, the high was 3,008. We're now 10 points off that high already. Yeah. The NASDAQ, uh, I believe we just put a solid 50 points off yes. that high. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll see where this goes. Yeah. The, uh... And I couldn't find that article real quickly, but you got the gist of it, right? I mean, if you're 
using a company that's losing oh, billions, yeah. billions of dollars. Right. You better not become too dependent on it because you can, but understand that they're losing billions with the idea of eventually, eventually they're going to raise those prices to right. turn a profit once they have you locked into their ecosystem. So just be aware. You right. should be, but guess what? It's going to surprise a few people, man. When, oh, like, when it comes I, I think even we just use Uber. It's such a service. It's like, it is. You can, like we're at the 300 block in St. Pete, folks, okay? So just, you know, you go one, two, three from the water going out. You can go like, 20 to 30 blocks, which is a long way, for $6.52. Yeah. It's not that long when you're in the city compared to how far some people go, right? But five, six dollars a ride. I mean, it doesn't exist. My it God. didn't exist before Uber. No. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We can think of swim coming up next. And I'm Matt, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave Wait, I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Go get them, folks.